Thank you again for allowing me to join you as we spend just a few moments in God's Word, specifically as we spend a few moments in Luke's account of the life of Christ. As we're looking at this topic called Dear Lover of God, as Luke writes to Theophilus, the lover of God. And as those who love God, as we're looking to Luke's account and learning more about Christ, who he is and what he said, and his lessons for his people then and those lessons for us today, let's dive into what is considered by many to be a very difficult text to understand. But let's see if it's a little more simple than maybe we've tried to make it. Let's go to Luke chapter 21, Luke 21. And let's begin at verse 25, Luke 21, verse 25. And there will be signs in the sun and moon and stars. And on the earth, distress of nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Now many people will look at this, and they'll begin to talk about the end times. When Jesus is coming back, when Jesus is returning to take us on to heaven or to met out punishment or take us on to judgment where we will either face punishment or we will face eternity. And so they talk about the signs of the sun, moon, and stars and, and wars and, and, and the seas and earthquakes and all these things. And, and so anytime there's an earthquake and then a flood and then rain and then there's a rumor of war, someone will say, see, see what's going on here? This is the end time. Let me be very simple here and very direct that this ties in with what we read in verses 20 through 24, what we read in verses 10 through 19, and what we read in verses 5 through 9. So the entire context of this chapter from verse 5 on through what we've read today is about the same thing. The fall of Jerusalem and the destruction of the temple and the coming persecution and God's people, his disciples, his church, being ready for what comes. Now you're saying, well, wait a minute. What about the signs and the sun and the moon and the stars? How, how do you know that that's not about the end times? One, because that's a general statement of a fall of a nation. If you go back into the Old Testament, you can read about the fall of Babylon in Isaiah 13, or you can read about the, the fall of Edom in Isaiah 34, and, and uh, even of Pharaoh in, in, uh, in Egypt and Ezekiel and in Joel chapter 2. And all of these things, all of these prophecies that were made and these statements were made were about the fall of a kingdom, the sign of the sun and the moon and the stars. So it's a reference to the fall of a kingdom, specifically here, the fall of Jerusalem. And then you have this idea of the coming of the Lord. We see it says the Lord is coming. Well, the coming of the Lord is another one of those prophetic statements. It's a statement of judgment. In fact, the coming of the Lord or a similar phrase can be used any time the Lord is accomplishing his work among men. He came to destroy Egypt, Isaiah 19. Jesus promised he would come to establish his kingdom, his church. So this coming of the Lord may refer to the fact that his kingdom has been established and now he's showing that it's his kingdom, the spiritual kingdom, not the physical kingdom of Israel or Jerusalem or Judah. The coming of the Lord has a reference to God accomplishing his work. So this is a work of God, this destruction of Jerusalem, this destruction of the temple, because it's a sign of the change of time from, from the dispensation of Israel and Judah to the dispensation of Christ from the law of Moses to the law of Christ. And then we keep going. It says, wait a minute. You keep looking and it says um, that, that the Son of Man is coming in a cloud. Again, that idea of Son of Man is God coming in judgment. It's a sign that God is going to do his work. It's not about the end of time. This is about the destruction of Jerusalem. 
So there is judgment coming on Jerusalem. And God's people at that time did not need to worry about it because their redemption was near. Their redemption was right there. And that redemption was life in Christ. Okay, Scott. If that's what this is about, why do we need to read it? What do we need to learn from it? What we need to learn is that our redemption is not in a physical place. Our redemption is not in Jerusalem. We don't need to be right with Jerusalem in order to be right with God. We need to be right with God through Jesus Christ. That is our redemption. He is the one that we follow. And so let me ask you a simple question. Are you following God through Christ? That is your redemption. That is our salvation. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, we thank you so much for your blessings and for your care and for your love. Father, help us to be your people through Jesus Christ. Father, we do love you. We know that you loved us first. In sending your son, you proved that love. You demonstrated that love. Father, help us to live that. Father, thank you for the grace that is in Christ and his sacrifice, his death, his resurrection. Father, help us to live for you through him. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for allowing me to join you. And thank you for spending time each day in God's word. I do look forward to these. I hope you do as well. So until the next time we're together, my prayer is, as always, that God will bless your day. Gentle